Hooray for technology. <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure at what point I cut out when we were talking, um, but going between a gas, a liquid, or a solid is known as a phase change, right? A phase change can also be a type of Hold on, quick question, Professor, before you cut out, like right before, yeah. you mentioned that um, you could go from a gas to a liquid, liquid to a solid, all by cooling temp, right? So you can go between different phases of matter by cooling or heating, depending on which way you're going. And we'll talk more about that in detail later on in the semester. Okay, cool. So basically what I need you guys to know for now is... Um, what um, what the three phases of matter are, right? Solid, liquid, gas, and to know their relative densities, right? So solid is the most dense, liquid is the least, uh, sorry, uh, is less dense, and then gas is the lowest density, right? Um, I also need you to know that solids tend to be rigid, liquids um, can flow and conform to their container, and that gases are able to expand or contract. To, to fit the size of their container. Another way of saying expand or contract is they are compressible. Okay. Is everybody with me on that? So uh, liquid and gas are both compressible or just gas? Um, liquids are very, very slightly compressible, but nothing compared with gases, right? So I would say liquids are more similar to solids um, than they are to gases. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Yes. Other questions about what you would want to know for this? Going back to what we were talking about at the beginning of class two, um, you're going to want to know the definitions of atom, element, molecules, and compounds, and what the differences are between them, right? I think that that'll be a little bit easier to think about um, when we get into chapter two and three, because then we're going to talk a lot more about the periodic table, about compounds, elements, all of these things. So we'll get a lot more context for that as we go through the next few chapters. Do you have a question, Lindsay? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, nice. I, I walked away for a second. Um, so phase change, uh, what do you want us to know for that? That's, so, that's like the compressible. So phase change would be going from one of these physical states to another, right? Thank you. Yep. Because a phase change involves going from one physical state to another, it's called a physical change. So are they used interchangeably then, phase change and physical change? Not necessarily. There are physical changes that are not phase changes, and we're going to talk about that in just a sec. Okay. Other questions about what we were just talking about? Are you guys cool with me? Cool? Cool. I'm going to erase. Is that okay, guys? All right, so we talked about uh, physical changes. You're going a little bit off the board up top. Thank you, <laughs> appreciate you. All right, so we talked about physical changes. So one kind of physical change that we can have is a phase change. which would be going from a solid to a liquid, uh, a liquid to a solid, solid to a gas, gas to a liquid, etc. right? Any of those combinations. I don't think I listed them all, but you guys can use your imaginations. There's a lot of different phase changes we could have. Um, so that's one type of physical change. 
Um, other physical changes that you can have um, would be things like changing shape. Yeah, okay, spell that right. <laughs> so changing shape, um, uh, changing size. Um, changing temperature. So these would all be examples of physical change. Do, um, do mixing and suspension and stuff like that count as well? Um, that gets a little more complicated. We're going to get into phases in detail in chapter 8. So let's hold off on that question for now. Other questions about physical changes? Cool. So um, the contrast to that are what are called chemical changes. So this being able to categorize um, events or, um, or uh, things that are happening to matter as either uh, physical changes or chemical changes is a, big, uh, is a big thing in chemistry. We talk about this a lot. Um, and it's very confusing for students. Um, so the, the breakdown that I like to give you, the easiest way to remember this, in order to have a chemical change, you have to make a new chemical. Right? This means that you must make a new compound, a new molecule, or something like that. Okay? Something new must be made. Another way to think about chemical changes is they tend to be irreversible. Let me try this again. Irreversible. I told you guys I have no idea how to spell, right? <laughs> I will, I will inevitably be uh, phonetically spelling things as we're talking in class constantly. So I'm um, guessing you're probably like, what the hell does that mean? Uh, irreversible? I don't know what that means. So for example, um, a chemical change uh, would be something like uh, burning stuff, right? So when we burn something, can you unburn something? No, right? That no. means that it's irreversible. So when we burn something, we have chemically altered the substance from what it was to now something new, right? And that change, that chemical change that's occurred will also be accompanied by physical changes, right? There'll be changes in temperature, uh, changes in size, shape, that kind of stuff. This is where it gets confusing for students, right? So you can have a chemical change that has physical changes involved, right? But unless you actually change the chemical composition, you're not doing um, a chemical change, right? So for example, going from say solid um, ice to liquid, right? You haven't changed the substance. It's still, it's still water, right? It's still H2O. Does that make sense? So a physical change doesn't change the composition of the substance that you're working with. A chemical change always does. Does that make sense, guys? You want, you want a couple more examples? Yeah, please. Yeah. So um, another example of a chemical change would be eating food, right? Um, you can't unmetabolize food. Does that make sense? You eat the food, it goes in your body, it starts going, uh, going through a bunch of chemical processes that take energy and give it to your body to do all of these other biological processes, but you can't uneat the food. What is an example of a 
chemical change where there's no um, physical change? It's pretty uncommon, actually. <laughs> um, so, so usually when you have a chemical change, there is physical evidence of that chemical change. Um, it's very rare that you would have a chemical change and no evidence of that uh, of that chemical change. But um, one example of a chemical change, um, you guys heard the terms acids and bases before? So when you have an acid that combines with a base, you end up getting what's called a neutralization reaction. Um, basically, sorry, no pun intended. You have two substances coming together to form water. And water is not something that you can visibly see when it's forming, right? But that's a chemical change. So again, generally speaking, Sadie, there are very few examples of where that's the case. Um, but it can happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, and I think that, that, again, is what makes it confusing for students because you can have physical changes that are not chemical changes, but most chemical changes also have physical changes that accompany them, right? And again, I think that the easiest way to test this mentally is to think about whether or not you can undo something, right? Um, so let's talk about um, a physical change that's not a chemical change. Um, so... One example of that would be breaking glass, right? So I can break glass, it changes the shape, it changes the size, right? But it's not changing the um, actual glass molecules themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Questions about that? Okay, so um, before we before we take off, I just want to let you guys know there's a couple of topics that we didn't really touch on in chapter one. Um, the big ones being the scientific method and uh, measurement. Um, the reason why I don't really touch on those in lecture is because you're going to see them in lab. Okay. But that being said, I do expect you to know the four um, parts, the four components of the scientific method. Um, so again, those are all listed in your key terms. They're all detailed explicitly. If you guys have questions about that, please let me know. Um, in terms of measurements, precision, stuff like that, um, we won't really talk about that in this class, nor will we talk about significant figures. Um, it's it's an important thing, but I think it's really only important in the context of actually making measurements, aka things you do in the lab. Um, so I am not going to ask you to know how to do significant figures in lecture, ever. Okay? You're welcome. Um, my goal for you guys is to be able to understand um, how to do the problem solving and the math involved. Um, and that, to me, is much more important than being able to remember um, a bunch of little rules about uh, when to round, okay? So um, don't stress out about that. Uh, you will see it in lab, and when you see it in lab, please make sure that you're being diligent and trying to follow those rules. Um, but I will never ask you in lecture to do anything with sig figs. Cool, Zs? Any Thank other? you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Lindsay. I think it's hard enough um, trying to make sure you have the math and the problem solving down. Um, and I feel like it's really um, discouraging when you get through a problem that's really hard. And then all of a sudden your teacher is like, oh, yeah, but you got the answer wrong because sig figs. <laughs> so, um, so I really want you guys to feel empowered by this stuff, um, not like browbeaten. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's uh, there. And there are other chemistry courses where I think significant figures and measurements are really, really important if you're going on to do um, more general chemistry, that kind of stuff. But at this level, um, I, I just don't see it being um, something that you guys are probably going to work with in the future. So, um, so yeah. Any other questions about what we talked about? <laughs> 